Okay, so with everything I've shown you so far about the sequencer, this edit switch here has been set to voice, but it can also be set to step. Let's look at that. Okay, now you know how it works. If this edit switch is set to voice, we choose a voice from the list here. I'll choose the kick drum. This is the synthesis for the voice. And this is the sequence for the voice in the current pattern we're working on. Now, when the edit switch is set to voice, if I change anything in the synthesis area, I'm making permanent changes to the selected voice edit. Okay. If I change any synthesis parameter or mess with the sample or anything like that, with the switch set to voice, I'm simply editing the voice. Also, with the switch here set to voice, any time the voice is triggered, we hear that voice being triggered as is, as the parameters are set for that voice in the, in the voice edit. So in the case of this kick drum here, its voice edit is, it's a single oscillator at a pitch of G0, plus some filter and EQ. Right, that's the voice edit. And with the switch set to voice, every time voice is triggered we therefore hear the voice being triggered at the pitch of G0 but if this kick drum voice used a sample instead at a pitch of C2 then with the switch here set to voice every time it was triggered by the sequencer we'd hear the kick drum sample at the pitch of C2 exactly as it is set in the voice edit all right that's voice mode but we can switch into step like that now when you switch into step the synth parameters become haloed in an orangey yellow colour and we gain this dark grey row in the TR sequencer called the step select row. And we can click and highlight any active step in the sequence for the current voice, like that. Now when you're in this um, step edit mode, you can still input steps into the sequencer. Look, I'll put in a step on the seventh and I can take any steps out. But the point is we can now highlight any active step in the sequence using the step select row. Now the other thing is when you first switch into step mode, um, this silver panel is completely greyed out. Okay? When we switch into step this panel changes, but at first everything is greyed out. There's a drop down list but it doesn't work, there's a reset button and a mute and solo button but they're all disabled. Okay? So, current voice is the kick drum. Its voice edit is a single oscillator at G0. In basic voice mode, when it's triggered, we hear it at that pitch of G0. I switch into step mode. I choose step 5. And with step 5 selected, I change the oscillator pitch. I'm putting a controller move into this step for the oscillator pitch. And as I move this parameter, oscillator pitch we see this vertical ladder on the selected step moving to reflect what I'm doing with the parameter controller. So I'll push up the pitch of the oscillator on this step to G2. Then on the ninth step I'll set it to G1. Now I've put two controller moves in on step 5 and 9 for the pitch and the pitch of the oscillator will change on these two steps. Okay, now that we have one active parameter in our sequence for the voice, the active parameter appears here in the panel, in the drop down list. There it is, oscillator one pitch. That's the only active parameter in step edit for this voice. Okay, now I'm going to put in a second parameter. I'll choose step five again and I'll move the cutoff. As I move the cutoff, you see this ladder on the selected step moving to reflect what I'm doing with the cutoff, right? So. On this step, I'm going to roll off the cutoff to a softer, less trebly setting, and the same on the ninth step, like that. So now I've got two active parameters in my step sequence for the voice. On these two steps, the oscillator pitch changes and the filter rolls off to a softer setting. Here we go. Like that, and that's how you do it, right? Okay, now once you've got two or more active parameters in your step sequence for the voice, you can start to use the mute and solo buttons. So I'll choose the uh, cutoff and I'll solo it 
and now with the filter cut off soloed we only hear the filter moves no more pitch if I solo the pitch we only hear the pitch moves not the filter and we've got mute as well so I can choose the um, oscillator pitch and mute it it's now muted we only hear the filter moves or I can mute the cutoff and then we only hear the pitch like that okay and that is how it works okay now um, if you want to reset and remove active parameters from the sequence for the current voice you do it like this I choose the cutoff first and first I click to reset that selected parameter I click the reset button now watch the reset button when I click to reset ready one two three reset it has reset that filter cutoff parameter on any steps where it had been changed and now the parameter has been reset the button changes to say delete and I can now click this to delete that parameter completely from the step sequence but here's a tip once you've reset a parameter don't immediately delete it click play on the sequencer trigger the voice just once that's all it takes and that ensures that the parameter has been properly reset then delete it okay now we're left with one active parameter the pitch I reset but I don't immediately delete I press play and trigger the voice just once that ensures the pitch has been properly reset then I delete and now there are no more active parameters in the sequence for the voice and that's how the step sequencer works um, okay now the most common way that people use this step sequence um, thing is to make pitched melodies with the synthesizer voices in Ultrabeat let me show you that I'll choose this uh, 25th voice solo it switch into voice let's look at its voice edit it's a two oscillator voice and both oscillators are on the pitch of C but they're an octave apart C1 and C0 so with the switch set to voice every time the voice is triggered we hear it at the pitch of C like that now I switch into step I choose the fifth step and I'll change the pitch of both oscillators from C to G Oh, there we go. Then on the eighth step, I'll change them to A sharp. Then on the tenth step, I'll push them up an octave to the next C. Like that. And like that. And now I've changed the pitch of the two oscillators on these three steps and I've created a melody by doing that. Yeah, so on this step the oscillators are at their normal pitch C, then they go to G, A sharp, C an octave higher and then back to the original C again, creating a melody. And that's how you do that. And you should really, really get into this technique of doing pitch melodies, but here's a tip. Don't just do it with synth voices in Ultrabeat. Try doing these pitch melodies with drum and percussion voices as well, because you can get some fantastic results like that. Um, and I'll give you one example. Um, James Bond Goldeneye, okay? the film that rebooted the James Bond franchise. Uh, a British composer called David Arnold got the contract to do the score for that film, and I believe he still does it now for the other films. And he used this wonderful technique of doing tuned timpani percussion in the score, in the tense, more quiet moments of the film. So James Bond's creeping around, setting some bombs or something, and you hear this, uh, per this percussion timpani drums played with pitch doing the James Bond theme, going... Like that. And it was absolutely fantastic, great technique, it really, really made the score. Great atmosphere and everything. So try doing these pitched melodies using step edit, but on drum and percussion voices. And I guarantee you'll come up with some really cool stuff. All right. 
Okay, so we got this tuned melody with this um, using these edit controller moves for the pitch of the oscillators, giving us this melody. And here's a tip: if you've got step parameters in your current pattern for any voice or more than one voice, when you export the pattern, if the switch is set to step and you export the pattern, those step edit moves will be exported in the pattern as MIDI controller bits of information. So when the pattern plays back, it plays back the step um, controllers, in this case the pitch. But if you export the pattern with the switch here set to voice, even though there's step edit stuff in the pattern, the controller data for those step edit moves do not get exported. So this export version doesn't have the pitch controller information in. Like that. Okay. Now I'll switch it back to step and re-export the pattern, which will have the pitch controller information in. Here we go. And if we look at the pattern in Piano Edit, you'll also notice that, remember, the 25th voice when was soloed when I exported the pattern. If you have any voices soloed in an ex when a pattern is exported, then the other notes for the other voices in the in the pattern will be muted. Look, there, there's the other voices muted. There's the synth voice unmuted. Now the synth voice continually re-triggers at its raw pitch of C3, but the pitch is being done by these MIDI controller moves in the exported pattern, because these are doing changing the pitch of the oscillator on the different pitches. Like that. Okay. And there's the exported pattern with the pitch information. That's that. I'll step at it. I'll just finish off by removing the step information for the pitch for the oscillators in this pattern for the uh, synth voice. Um, I'll reset oscillator pitch one. Bump reset. Reset oscillator pitch two. Reset. I won't delete them yet. I'll trigger the voice once to ensure that the oscillators have been properly reset. Then delete them both. Boom. No more step information in the pattern. Yeah, and there you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Step Edit.